Sorry about that, Caleb. Hey guys, Scanner Danner here. Uh, don't have my son Caleb with me, so I'm using the tripod. I'm outside, sun's in my eyes. I have a little bit of a head cold, so you guys get to hear me talk all nasally for the rest of the time on this car. Uh, we are working on, I think it's a 2008 uh, Dodge Calib Caliber? Caliper? <laughs> Not Caliper, like brake caliper. Caliber. Uh, hang on. Let me get you that. Caliber, yes, 2008 Dodge Caliber. Um, so a little history on this car. Uh, I don't actually know the car itself, but I know the family because I just did a Hyundai for them. I believe it was a Hyundai last week here at Latour's Auto that had mouse damage. Um, the wiring harnesses were chewed and um, that was the fix for the vehicle. I did film it, but um, this is the same family. And the funny thing about this car is it has one of the same codes. That Hyundai that I did last week, one of the codes was the output speed sensor for the transmission. And this has an output speed sensor code. My first thought is we have more mouse damage here. I'm not totally sure just yet. Let me uh, show you what we have on the scan tool first. All right, so codes menu. Um, this is in my engine system. I have a transmission. <laughs> All right, so doing a full system scan. And what you see is in the engine, we have that generic P0700 code, which is just saying, hey, we have a fault in the transmission. Go to the transmission and look up the code. That's basically what that means. Um, we have an intake air temp sensor circuit too high. A cooling system performance code, so it probably needs a thermostat. Uh, and then in the transmission, there's your output speed sensor circuit, no signal. And then a line pressure solenoid performance code uh, as well. And the rest of this, I am not worried about any of the other accessories. So we're, we are concerned about our output speed sensor, our intake air temp sensor, are the two primary ones in my opinion. And yeah, we can kind of look at the uh, other solenoid code too. Now you see in the OBD2 system, they're not even listing the, the line pressure solenoid performance. That's a stored code, maybe meaning history. Um, but a few things we can do before we get too deep into this. Let's go to the engine management system and go to data. And under the engine, I just want to look at my intake air temp sensor and see what it's showing. And this is as far as I got off camera right there, minus 39 degrees. So you guys that are following along, this would be my chapter seven material, which I have, nope, chapter six, which is listed as thermistors. And when you learn about thermistors and their operation, you learn about them being negative temperature coefficient. You also learn that when you see low numbers like we have, you're talking about an open circuit. So open circuit kind of ties in with the potential of having the wiring messed up from animals like their last car they brought me last week. Um, I did a visual, open the hood. Let's get you under there. When I opened the hood, this was laying right here. So that tells me that someone got to the battery that's what this is it says remove for battery access that was sitting there so someone's been in here and um, then I can see my intake air temp sensor sitting right here and actually it's not plugged in all the way someone was in here and created or caused that code watch bam 48 degrees on the scan tool somebody caused that one so intake air temp, not an issue. No problem there, open circuit. Good to know your fundamentals, guys, it really is. If you guys that want to learn more about this kind of stuff and your foundational, fundamental stuff, you gotta go to my website, www.scannerdanner.com. I have a book, a field manual, and I have Scanner Danner Premium where I invite you in my classroom, teach you all kind of stuff like this. Foundational pieces, open circuit, classic, open circuit case right there created by the customer I believe in any case that was nice and easy so we need to address this transmission error um, I'm gonna set this up so we can test drive it so I need to see what this output speed circuits looking like just kind of set that there for our test drive would be fine I did do a visual on the harness before I uh, turned the camera on I didn't see anything but it doesn't mean we're not going to Uh, 
All right, let's see. Before we go for a ride, let's get our transmission data in here. All right. <clears throat> Boogies. <clears throat> Boogies. <laughs> oh, it sucks being sick. Okay, let's see. Let's customize this. I don't see one that says output speed. Should be the vehicle speed data. Let's uh, go for a ride, see what this shows. I'm showing vehicle speed. On the speedometer, it's reading. It's reading on the scan tool as well. Ah, the car is telling on me. I didn't put my seatbelt on. I'm working on it. Fine. It interferes with my mic. I'm clearing these codes, guys. Clearing everything. Somebody playing around. We're going to go drive this thing. See what it does. We'll watch our coolant temp sensor too on our test drive. Paying attention to the output speed sensor and everything else. I need engine temp for this test drive. I wanna show you guys the thermostat. So we have two engine temp signals. We can watch those guys. You guys can watch the bottom right too, the vehicle speed while we're driving. Got a power steering line right there. One of the things you can do with stuck open thermostats is you pull your engine temps up, uh, temperature sensor up and uh, you sit in traffic for a little bit or sit still, have the engine running, you see we're climbing, we're like 180 degrees, still climbing. Then what you do is you go for a ride and, and you put constant airflow across the radiator and um, we should not get a temperature drop is the point. If this thermostat's doing what it should be doing, we should continue to climb Man, his rotors are rusty. This thing hasn't been driven for a while, just like their other car. Would not be surprised to find some wiring issues down at that speed sensor. Right now it's working. Whoa. It's got a weird light throttle surge to it. it did momentarily, that's for sure. Graph for a mile per hour too, or our vehicle speed. I don't know that this is the same data parameter coming from the output speed sensor of the transmission. I had a line pressure solenoid code too. You see temperatures climbing, so pretty decent indication here of thermostat condition the fact that I'm moving and the temperature still climbing I'd like to see it you know, be at least 190 ha huh. you got some wiring issues on this the turn signal was blinking normally and then and started blinking rapidly and dinged at me. <laughs> it also has an initial first gear, like when I pull out, light throttle surge. Power steering whine. Got multiple issues with this car right there. What is that? This is one of those cars, it's like, if this is my customer, well, where do you start? You got a power steering whine, so you have a leak. You have a light throttle surge. You have someone that was in here messing around with the cover. Why was the intake air temp sensor unplugged? When did the check engine light come on? Um, there's just so many, so many different things potentially wrong with this car and I know nothing about it it's like oh look at this car there's a check engine light on no not good enough man 
that didn't feel good. That was a weird downshift. Water temp looks good. I'm starting to think maybe the thermostat's okay. 190 degrees. Let's see if we have any pending codes. No codes present. So all of our faults are intermittent. And with five other cars to work on today, last thing I'm gonna be worried about is some intermittent problem. Right rear turn signal lamp control circuit high. So we probably have a, a bulb that's out on the right side. That's why we had that, that code. And we could do a visual inspection on the wiring harness. Just given, given the uh, history of this with animals in their last car, that's what I'm gonna do, a visual inspection. And then uh, we'll, go, we'll just go from there. I might be moving away from this car. And uh, unless I find something obvious with the wiring, I'm gonna have Pete drive this car a little bit more and you know, wait for these codes to come back. That's a pretty nasty surge right there. I'm gonna drive this a little bit more. Did not like the way that felt. I just need some guidance on what that is. Is that the output speed sensor making it do that? It certainly could, but I'm not seeing the speedometer drop out, but I've seen cars that the output speed sensor, the transmission doesn't control the speedometer, and it's, you know, the ABS wheel speed sensor that does, and so yeah, you don't want to base everything off the speedometer. Now, I didn't see it dropping out on the scan tool either, but I might be looking at the wrong data pit. Vehicle speed on the scan tool may not be the output speed sensor data. I'm just trying to tie in the transmission codes I had with the surge that I'm feeling. Because I do not believe it's engine related. So you guys ever hear of the legend of the green man? So any of you um, follow like stuff like that? I don't know if you call them folklores or what's the other word I'm looking for. Um, well, anyway, um, if you guys want, while we're test driving this, I can take you through Green Man Tunnel. Do a Google search on the legend of the Green Man. Supposedly it's pretty famous. I, I actually saw something on the, on the Discovery or History Channel one time where they were doing uh, urban legends. And uh, one of them was the, the Green Man. Why don't we do that? Let's go, I'll take you to the green, to, to the Green Man Tunnel. The legend says that he was struck by lightning and turned green. And his face was all disfigured and he, he would appear in this tunnel. Oh, uh, there's a lot of different versions of the story that I've heard over the years. Apparently it was some uh, it was a real guy that had a real uh, problem, something with his skin, and uh, he would take walks, I guess, at night, just because of, I guess, maybe the way he looked, and he scared people, and uh, that's where the legend started. There's really not much scanned out to be looking at right now, guys. I, I'm just paying attention to what the car is doing. See if I can get that light speed surge. Yeah. Kind of, it's there, but the road's bumpy, so it's kind of hard to feel it. That almost feels like a misfire. Light throttle misfire. We're not far, just right down this road. Uh, it's a real weird tunnel. Um, the
stream flows through it too so it's like half road and half stream and then the just to my left here you can kind of see a platform on in the ground there used to be a train that ran through here and uh, back in the coal days um, this used to be Snowden Township which is now part of South Park and we're coming up on the tunnel that parallels the Green Man Tunnel so the, the Green Man Tunnel is actually this tunnel to the left that used to be a train tunnel and um, they store salt in there now looks like they redid a lot of stuff here but up in there is the is technically the Green Man Tunnel All right up there that is the Green Man Tunnel and then this one's pretty cool a lot of damage here from those floods we had over the summer but what you do when you pull up to here is you blow your horn you gotta let people know on the other side that you're coming through because this is such a sharp bend they have a stop sign too That's why, right there. And here's the other side of the Green Man Tunnel. You come out. <laughs> Legend of the Green Man. Let's turn around. We're gonna go back through. Giving this car back to Pete. Oh, heard the horn. Gotta wait. You're supposed to keep blowing your horn there, buddy. Pretty cool tunnel, though. Stream flows through it, too. This absolutely has got this light throttle surge. That feels like a misfire, which isn't even any of the codes that we had. There were no misfire codes. It's only light throttle. I'm pull up some scan data here. Let's do a quick code scan again. See, see if we have anything new showing up. Nope, nothing in the engine or transmission. Just that right rear turn signal. And it just felt like a misfire to me. Light throttle. I'm gonna give this back. I'm gonna have Pete have the customer drive it. So this light comes back on and ask him why that battery tray was off why the intake air temp sensor was unplugged. Showed a couple of misfires on this screen, but nothing I want to chase at the moment. Well, I said we'd do a visual inspection, so I guess we can do that. Let's pull up our temp data real quick. Yeah, I don't mind, 200 degrees. And I've been driving this. I had a pretty steady amount of airflow past it, so usually when you have cooling system performance, you have those kind of faults. Uh, you'll see your your engine temperature will drop pretty significantly while you're driving the car indicating a stuck open thermostat it still could be a thermostat issue if it's taking too long to warm up it might have a little bit of a bleed to it these computer systems have run timer so it takes a, into account outside air temperature and then uh, startup time and then I'm sure engine load and speed are a factor as well but it has a timer it wants to see the engine temperature reach X degree Fahrenheit in X amount of time you know it's gonna be based again off of outside air temperature and uh, run time primarily 
and then if it takes too long to reach that temperature then what you'll get is thermostat related fault codes I'm okay with these numbers as far as the engine temperature goes anyway now some of you guys are probably thinking you know why does this have an engine temperature um, reading and then an engine temperature too uh, the answer is I don't know apparently it has two different coolant temp sensors is the short answer for that and why they're using two where they're located don't know and to be honest in this can, uh, particular scenario I don't care I'm not worried about it uh, this engine temperature looks fine to me I'm not worried about the coolant temperature um, performance code that we had at least not at this point in time. There's some other things that need to be looked at on this car for sure. Power steering is definitely one of them. All right, let's go do a visual inspection, see what we find in particular as related to the output speed of the transmission. See if we got some critters. <clears throat> I don't know that I'd be doing this visual inspection had I not just did a car for these, this same family, like I said, with these critters. Not even sure where the output speed sensor is. Yeah, I don't see anything, guys. This is one that we're definitely going to give back to the owner and have him drive it. I'll pick this up another time. Some of this is dictated by what, what I have going on. I have like three four other cars I need to look at. Last thing I'm gonna do right now is fight an intermittent problem. Not sure how you guys handle things like this. I just checked my camera timer. And I, you know, I've been on this car for 45 minutes. I've been filming for 45 minutes, most of it test drive. And, you know, that's 45 minutes, 45 minutes of your time. Are you gonna charge your customer? You're gonna give it to them. Depends if it's a good customer or not. Good timing, Pete. We're just talking about how to handle something like this intermittent faults um, had intake air temp sensor wasn't plugged in all the way so someone was in here and put a new air filter in this and this was actually sitting this was sitting like to the side so I don't okay. I don't know if somebody jump started the battery but the intake air temp sensor wasn't plugged in but I have some history codes for the transmission output speed sensor right. um, but everything looks good I cleared those faults uh, nothing's come back um, there's clips that are missing right here. Okay. So I don't know where they are. Right. Um, yeah, I've never been in But I cleared the faults, give this back to the customer and let them drive it. I also had thermostat code. Let's see, the codes were intake air and then uh, output speed and then another transmission error code. And I was worried about critters just like the last car. Right. I don't see anything that visually. That code, supposedly they did a thermostat. Did they do a thermostat? They probably never cleared it. Okay, up. I didn't know that. Yeah, so they that's. Did. They told me, they, she told me she had one in the back of the car. There so that somebody did a thermostat and probably never plugged this oh, intake oh, air really? temp sensor back in, but it also had a speed sensor code. So okay. my guess is it's probably going to come back, but this is one I cleared the codes, give it back to them, let them drive it. Get it ready um, for the emissions. Yeah, and, and this coolant level's low still too, Pete. So this, okay. if somebody just did a stat, they need, you know. Yep. top off the cooling Top system taxi, the other thing too power steering wine pretty decent power steering wine while I was driving it so maybe double check the yeah the fluid levels low in the reservoir which means they probably got a leak and I, I don't see you know anything else as far as, as far as what to do let them drive it so some unknowns that I was unaware of this just had a thermostat put in it is what Pete just said and um, someone was in there again left the intake air temp sensor unplugged so maybe that was the only reason the check engine light was on that transmission code did not come back everything's working fine visually I don't see anything wrong um, that light low speed surge I didn't like but I feel like uh, you know this is one of those things how do you bill for something like this how do you guys do it um, you know is is really depends on the customer if this is an established customer just no charge it let them come back if this is someone you may not see again we don't work for free so um, my time is worth money and 
uh, charging is is something that we need to do to be transparent for me and you guys as i'm filming these i don't charge pete anyway so you know for me it makes no difference at all i'm just walking away from this car i, I got enough stuff to do and and this isn't one of them right now uh, test drive intermittent faults can be done at a later time so guys i hope you enjoyed something from this maybe the legend of the green man <laughs> uh, i got more to do so i'll see you next time